be the praise, be the worship in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy, your kindness and your love. We honor you, my God. We bless you, my God. Take all the glory this afternoon as we seek your face. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, we welcome you back again to our wisdom night, the word of wisdom. And we give Jesus all the glory and all the praise and all the honor. And we thank you for joining us. We thank you for coming online to hear the infallible word of God, the powerful word of God that can change a person's life, that can transform a person. Friends, this is Dominion Miracle Center program, and we believe that God is with you, and God is with us, and we thank him for his goodness and his mercy. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the entrance of your word brings light. It brings understanding to the simple. And today, Lord, we ask you, God, for simplicity of thought, clarity of thought, that, Lord, your people will hear your voice, not anyone else's voice. We cover ourselves with the blood. We cover ourselves with the blood of the Lamb. We ask you, God, that take absolute control and let your name be exalted and be lifted up. This we ask in the name which is above every name, the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever you are, shout amen. Hallelujah. This afternoon, we're going to be looking at faith. We're coming back to faith. After we've looked at the the works of the enemy. We're coming back to faith. And we thank God that tonight, this afternoon, this evening, based on where you are watching, we want to thank God for your life. And we want to give Jesus all the glory, praise, and honor. And we've been looking at wisdom. And we say, what is wisdom? Wisdom is the application of the word of God, simply put it. Wisdom is the application, applying the word of God into your life. What does the Bible say? In Psalm 114, the Bible says only the fool says there's no God. So if you are not a fool, then you are wise. And wisdom comes by the application of the word of God. Let me have your good amen. Wisdom comes from the application, applying the word of God to your situation. It's wisdom. Look at it this way. Wisdom is so important that the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 10.10, 10, chapter 10, verse number 10, the Bible says, when the axe is dull, more strength needed to be applied. What does that mean? That means by wisdom, when you sharpen the axe, the workload will be easy. Your workload will be softer, will be easy. So wisdom is the application of the word of God. When you apply the word of God to your life, you are walking in supernatural wisdom. So that's the reason why we take time to understand the word of God and to look at the word of wisdom and apply it to our lives. In the book of Proverbs chapter 1 verse number 5, the Bible says wisdom is so important. It says the fear of the Lord the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Knowledge, knowledge, knowing about God, knowing about how to apply his word. That is wisdom. That is wisdom. So, friends, it is so important for us to understand wisdom. Wisdom. Oh, praise God. 
Glory to the Lamb of God. So the application of the word of God is wisdom. Wherever you are, wherever you are watching me here in the church, the in-person attendance, God wants you and I to understand what wisdom is all about. Now, look at it this way. The book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 7 says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. So in all of your seeking, seek wisdom. Why? Because it's the principal thing. It is supreme. That's why we take our time to study the word of God, which is wisdom. The word of God in its all entirety is wisdom. It's wisdom. Friends, let's look at another channel. When James, the apostle, he says, if anyone lack wisdom, let him ask God. Why? Because according to James, wisdom is so important. You cannot do anything outside of wisdom. You cannot be, you cannot walk with God outside of wisdom. So this is the reason why wisdom is so important. This is the reason why the book of the law is all wisdom. Look at someone. Someone says, you know, bless. Let me put the word wisdom there. Wisdom is the man. The man who has wisdom is anyone who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. You are going to walk in wisdom. You can't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. The ungodly man. What type of counsel is he going to give you? Or is she going to give you? So wisdom tells us that a man of wisdom, a woman of wisdom, is a person, is an individual who will not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor will stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. These are all foolishness. It will not bring any wisdom to you. It will not lead you aright. But look at this. The Bible says, but the man of wisdom is the man that will meditate upon God's word day and night. And then what does the Bible say? The Bible says, that individual shall be like a tree. Tree planted at the asket of a river who will bring forth its fruits in its season. In its season. And he says, whatever that person does will prosper, will be loved. A man of wisdom, a woman of wisdom is exactly what I've told you. So the word of God is our wisdom. And this is the reason why the Pharisees and the and, uh, and all those teachers of the law, they came together and they asked the people, what kind of wisdom is given to this Jesus that great things is wrought out of his hands? That tells you and I that wisdom is power. Wisdom, when you carry wisdom, when you walk in wisdom, you walk in power. You walk in power. Glory to God. So tonight, this afternoon, based on where you are watching, online, on Facebook, on YouTube. We're looking at faith. Faith. Our wisdom word for today is faith. 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 What is it? Faith. As we looked weeks by, we said faith was bringing into reality, the unrealityness of everything. What are we trying to say? We're saying that faith is you taking things that are not real and bringing them into reality. In the Hebrew chapter 11, verse number 1, the Bible says, Now faith is the substance of things that you and I hope for. You hope for. Your hope, your aspiration, your desire, things that you are looking for. 
it will not come outside of faith. It is the faith that will pull them to you. Faith will pull those substances to you. Those that you are looking for. Faith will pull them to you. So what are we saying then? Faith is you bringing into reality things that are not real. That's all about. And the interesting thing is this. God says, without faith, no one pleases me. You can't please God outside of faith. Wherever you are watching, those here, I want to let you know that God's word says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. We can go to church. We can even pray as much as we want. We can sing. We can do everything. But without faith, it is impossible. God deals with faith. God walks in faith. Without faith, it is impossible. I challenge you wherever you are. Wherever you are watching from, I challenge you. That God's word says faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things that you don't see. And how do we get it? By hearing the word of God. Faith cometh by. By hearing God's word. So as you are hearing the word of life. As you are hearing Jesus, the Holy Spirit, speaking to you today. Your faith is being built. Faith is being built in your system. Faith is being built in your heart. Faith is being built. In Jude chapter 20, verse number 20, chapter 120 says, And you, building your most holy faith, build your most holy faith. Faith must be built. How? By hearing God's word. By, by hearing the word of God. That's how the Bible says. Faith cometh not but to hear the word of God. So what is the Bible saying? Faith is so important. What does faith say? Faith calls things that be not as though they were. Isn't it not interesting? Faith will call things that be not as though they were. Your faith there's the reason why in Mark 11, 22, 23, Jesus said, if you speak to the mountain and you waver not, everything that you speak for shall be yours. Just to paraphrase. So, the book of Romans 4, 6 to 25, faith calls things that be not as though they were. Let's look at Romans chapter 10, verse 6. Romans 10, 6. Romans chapter 10, verse number 6. Look at what the Bible says. So interesting. Romans 10, 6 says, but a righteousness which is of faith. So righteousness is your faith in Christ Jesus. Because Jesus is your righteousness. So your faith in him. But the righteousness which is of faith. Speak it on this wise. This is how the righteousness of faith speaks. Look at this. Say not in thy heart. Who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what said it? The word is nigh thee, even in their mouth and in their heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. The word of faith that we preach. The word of faith that you and I talk about or deliberate upon. The word of faith. 
glory to God. The word of faith. God, word of faith. God calls those things that be not as though they were. And God expects you to do the same. We are the offsprings of Jesus. We are the offsprings of, we are the sons and daughters of God. And that which God does is that which we have to do. And he calls things that be not. God calls things that be not as though they were. Beloved, it is so interesting. God's ways are higher than our ways. That's the reason why he calls things that be not. So if you are going to walk in wisdom, you walk as God will walk. You walk in his precept. You walk in his steps. Beloved, that's how it is. You walk in his steps. God has a plan, but his plans are a plan of dominion. And he told us that in Genesis, he says, have dominion. Have dominion. So the wisdom man will take what God's word says and operate on it and act on it. That's walking in wisdom. You know, Solomon, Solomon asked the Lord, he said, God, you rule the whole world and you want me to rule Israel. I don't want to mess up. So give me wisdom, that same wisdom that you use to rule the world. Give me wisdom that I may bring clear judgment to my people and help them. God did it. God gave Solomon wisdom. And you and, you and I know how much wisdom that king carries. So friends, Isaiah 55, 8 to 11 says, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher. God's ways are so high. Glory to God. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 1, 26 to 31. 1 Corinthians 1, 26 to 31. Glory to God. Join me as we look at 1 Corinthians 1. 26. For ye see, look at this. For you see your calling, brethren, have that not many wise men after the flesh. There is a kind of wisdom, but that is after the flesh. There's two kinds of wisdom. Worldly wisdom and godly wisdom. But Paul, the apostle, is saying something concerning the worldly wisdom. Let's take a note. Let's take a look at it. He says, for you, you see, brethren, you're calling how that not many wise men after the flesh. Because the word of God is foolishness to those who are perishing. He said, the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. The word of life is foolishness. So God, what is God saying? God saying those who walk in the flesh, they have never been called. And he said not many have been called those who walk after the flesh. Not many mighty, not many noble are called. God said not mighty people have been called. Not people who call themselves noble we are the noble society. We are the elect society. God said, no, you are foolish. You are foolish society. Because the wisdom of this world is foolishness before God. So God says, I'm not going to take you. The elect, the noble, those who call themselves the sect, we are the people. We are those people. No, God says, those people can never be called by me because their nobleness or their mightiness is of the flesh. But I have not called men and women of the flesh. 27, it says, But God has chosen the foolish things 
of this world to confound the wise. Those things that the world think that they are foolish, they are of no, no reputation. Those things are useless. God said, that's what I'm going to use to confound those who think they are noble and wise. I'm going to distract their wisdom. I'm going to destroy their wisdom by using the people that they think they are useless. God says, I'm going to use those base things. Those base things, things that are of the base. And look at it. It says, things of this world to confound the wise. And God had chosen the weak, the weak, the weak things of this world to confound the things which are mighty. No wonder the Bible says when we are weak, then we are strong. Why? Because his power is made perfect in our weakness. In our weaknesses, God strengthens us. In our weaknesses, God makes us strong. In our weaknesses, God uses us to do mighty things. It is not of us, but God who works in us. The mightiness of God that works in us. It's not us, but the God of all flesh walks in us. Glory to God. Oh, somebody, whoever you are, I'm telling you, the things of this world are baseless before God. He said, I'll use the things of, the, of this world, which are weak things, to confound the mighty. Wisdom. And look at this. He says, and the best things, the best things are the things that are on the ground, base, base, things that are of no value. God said, I'm going to use that. The best things of this world and things which are despised, God has chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught, things that are. So God says, I'm going to use the best things. I'm going to use the weak things. I'm going to use the things that are not to bring to naught that which are. Number 29 says that all flesh, that no flesh should glory in his presence. See, when God begins to use you and you know that you are nobody, you know that the strength and the power and the glory that is coming out of you it's not of you, but of God, that you will not be proud, but humble yourself before God. The Bible says, humble yourself therefore before God, and he will exalt you. That is wisdom. For when you exalt yourself, God will humble you. God will humble you and cause you to be disappointed. So what is God saying, beloved? He said that no flesh, wherever you are, listen to me very carefully. The word of God says, no flesh will glory in his presence. No flesh will glory. He said, by my power have I done this. No. It is the power of the Holy Ghost that is using you so that you cannot brag, you cannot exalt yourself, you cannot lift yourself high. You will always come before you and say, God, it is only you. Only you who is doing this. God, only you is doing this. Oh, beloved. That is wisdom, walking in wisdom. What are we saying? Faith. By the faith of the Lord, you are able to do things. But you need to humble yourself. You need to humble yourself. That's wisdom. Humble yourself before the great God. Humble yourself before King Jesus. Humble yourself before the Holy Spirit. And ask the Holy Spirit. He will exalt you. Oh yes. He will exalt you. Glory to God. The Bible said that no flesh should glory in his presence. No flesh who glory in his presence. 
no flesh will glory in his presence. As we go back to our reading and our teaching, Jesus used God's way of dominion. The Bible says Abraham faith. He gave God glory in calling things that be not as though they were. He gave God glory. Abraham, when he calls those things that be not as though they were, he gave God glory. God told him that you're going to have children. Your children are going to be like the sand of the sea. And Abraham, Abraham, Look at himself and his body, which was dead, and his wife, Sarah, which has, who has passed the ways of women. But he did not despise what God said. He did not have unbelief. He had faith. Friends, I challenge you wherever you are. Whatever situation that you are going to right now, as you are watching me, have faith in God. Let your faith arise. Let faith arise in your soul. You are looking for a breakthrough. You are looking for a breakthrough in a situation. You are going through hard times. You are going through challenges. God is saying, have faith. Call those things that be known as though they were. Abraham. When God told him that he was going to have a child, and looking at his own self, and looking at his wife, he did not say, God, what you have said it will not come to pass." but he gave glory to God. Oh, friend, oh, beloved, if you will do exactly what Abraham did, don't look at the position that you are in right now. Don't look at the situation. Just honor God and thank him for the breakthrough Thank him for the breakthrough. Thank him for the healing. Thank him for the deliverance. Thank him for the prosperity that he has promised you. Thank him for the child that he said he's going to give you. Don't look at yourself and look at your belly. Don't look at what the doctors are saying. The doctors are great people, but they have an end. Only God has no end. Only God has no end. God is a mighty God. God is a supernatural God. God is a mighty God. And where the dust takes stop, God takes it from there. I say where the doctors will stop, God will take it from there. And God will bring a dramatic change in your situation. Wherever you are, shout a big amen. For the Holy Spirit wants to touch you wherever you are. If you have faith in him, wherever the doctors will stop is where God will start. God has no end. The doctors has end. Sometimes the doctors tell you that's how far we can go. That's how far we can go. So what happens after the doctors tell or they tell you that's how far they can go? What happens? You just fizzle out and what happened? But that's where God takes over. That's where the power of God takes over. That's where by his stripes you were healed. That's where by the anointing every yoke is broken. Believe me, friend, by the anointing every yoke by the anointing, every burden is rolled away. Ha! Huh? That's how it works. That's how it works. So this evening, this afternoon, we're looking at the spirit of faith. Faith is a spirit. Faith is a spirit. There is a spirit of faith that you need to ask God to come upon you. That that spirit, when it takes over your life, you take no for an answer. Or you only text what the word of God says. What the word of God says is what goes. 
You don't take any no. There is a spirit of faith. There is a spirit of faith. Glory to God. Glory to God. Abraham had that spirit of faith. He did not despise what the word of God was saying. When God told him, he didn't say, God, who do you think you are? You, you, look at me. I am 99 years old and my wife is equally old. Where are we going to have? But he counted him who judges righteously. Abraham counted on him who was faithful. Beloved, wherever you are, count on the faithfulness of God. Count on his faithfulness. Count on his goodness and his mercy. Whatever you are going through, this afternoon, I place a challenge on you that you can come out of it. You can come out of it by faith in Christ, by faith in Jesus, by faith in Jesus. You can come out of it. You can come out of it. Jesus says, speak to the mountain. Just give him glory. Just give him glory. Just tell the Lord Jesus that this is your word. I stand upon your word and I'll give you glory. I'll give you glory for healing. I'll give you glory for the breakthrough. I'll give you glory. And it shall. There is a spirit of faith that goes on to work on your behalf. Glory to God. Abraham, he calls him that be not. He call it in that be not as though they were. Can you, can you, can you do that? Wherever you are, can you put that into practice? You go in for an interview, all odds against you, but you believe he who is faithful. Oh, praise God, hallelujah. Abraham, when Abraham God asks him, no wonder Abraham is the father of faith. And as we, we walk in the steps of Abraham and walks by the steps of our king, Jesus, Abraham was put in a test. In Genesis chapter 22, verse number 5, when God asks him, now go and sacrifice your son Isaac for me. Bible says Abraham took the he took the wood, he took the fire. As his son asked him, Dad, we have the wood, we have the fire, but where is the sacrifice? It's a great question. The Lord knows what he was asking for because they have done several sacrifices with sheep, with oxen. With all sort of things, all sort of animals and birds. So he knew what he was asking. He said, I've seen the fire, I've seen the wood, but where is the sacrifice? Do you know what Abraham said? Beloved, listen to what Abraham said. He said, The Lord, the Lord will provide himself a lamb for the sacrifice. The Lord who provide a lamb for the sacrifice. Beloved, whatever you are looking for, if you will believe, all things are possible. God says, walk by faith and not by sight. God says, walk in the faith that I've given to you. Walk by faith. Walk by faith and not by sight. I understand when all odds are against you, but the, the odds of God is not against you. The odds are for you on the side of God. So Abraham, when they had reached the place of sacrifice, Mount Moriah, you know, Abraham had two of his servants go with him. And then he said this in Genesis chapter 22, verse number 5. He said, the land and I will go and come again to you. He said, I and my son, we are going to sacrifice 
and we are coming back. We are coming back. Meanwhile, by sacrifice, Isaac was to die. So in reality, Isaac was not coming back. But Abraham, when he was old and he could not do anything, his wife was also old. God gave them a son. God gave them Isaac. God gave them Isaac. So that same God who performed that miracle is the same God who said, go and sacrifice this boy for me. He knew at that time, Abraham, that God will be able to provide. Even if the lad dies or if Isaac dies, God was going to give him another. So he said, to his servant. I and the Lord. Wisdom. This afternoon. Are you walking in wisdom? To walk in wisdom is to walk in faith. You walk in faith. You are walking in wisdom. If you don't walk in faith. You are walking in foolishness. Why? Well, because only God's word is wisdom. The application of God's word is wisdom. So if you don't apply the word of God to your life and walk in it, you are walking in the application of self. What do we mean by that? You are walking in the flesh. You are walking in what the nobles of this world walks in. The mighty men of this world walks in. And God says, whatever they are doing is foolishness. So, beloved, what do you do now? God wants you to walk by faith. Abraham said, I and the Lord, we are going yonder and we are coming back. He knew that same God will provide this afternoon. Do you know? Do you believe? Do you have the trust that God will provide for you in your, in your area of uncertainty? Do you believe that God will provide for you in the area of, of looking for a job, in the area of you looking for a baby, a fruit in the womb, in the area of you looking for a healing? Do you believe and do you have faith in this God? That is the challenge that I throw to you. Those who walk in wisdom will believe God. Those who walk in wisdom will trust God. Those who walk in wisdom will have faith in God. Because to have faith in God is to walk in wisdom. And the Bible says those who lack it, ask God for wisdom. Ask God for wisdom. Then when wisdom comes, then comes faith. Because you are walking in the application of the word of God. And as you walk in the application of the word of God, you are walking in divine wisdom that will bring great result to you. Greatness will come this afternoon. Beloved, this evening, where are you now? When we take it step by step, the Bible says, go to the word that covers your situation. In faith. That's why we started by saying, your calling. Your calling. You are called by God. You are now a son of God. The Bible says in John 1 9, it says, John 1 11 and 12. He says, 9 says he came to his own, and all the way to bed, 12, 11 and 9, 11 and 10, 11. And 12 says, but as many, as many as believe him, trusted in him, as many as are walking in faith, he gave them the right to become the children of God. So you are a child of God. You are a child of God. You have to practice what God says. You have to walk in what God says we should walk in. We have to do what God says we need to do. That is wisdom. That is wisdom. So step by step, look for what God's word says concerning your situation. What is the word of God saying concerning your situation? Wisdom tells you go and search for it. 
Search for it. Be like the ant in Proverbs chapter 6. The ant, they gather their food in, in the summer. Search for the word of God that deals with your situation. Keep it before you, your eyes, ears, and, and, and deal with it. Keep the word of God before your soul, before your faith, and confess it. I tell you, Deacon, I confess the word of God in every situation. I confess by his stripes I'm healed. I confess it like I don't know how many times. I confess it for good strength. I confess for wisdom. I confess that the God will supply me with grace and anointing for the work that he has given me. I confess. I speak about it. I talk about it. I read about it. So go to God on the basis of his provision. That is wisdom. That's wisdom. Don't sit down at home and cry over what you are going through. Go to the word of God. Go to God, his word, and the provision of it, and then connect to it. Speak to the mountain, said Jesus. Speak to the mountain, the end result will come. Hey, <laughs> Speak to the mountain, the end result will come. Don't just worry yourself how the mountain is going to move. Just speak it and have faith. For example, if I have a situation, decree and declare that I have a job. In the name of Jesus, give him glory. How to get a job is not you. The Holy Spirit will walk around it and get you to a situation where a job will be provided for you. Then do not just lose hope. Just confess. Just speak about it. Just deal about it. And see God do great things. Jesus says, speak to the mountain. Speak to the mountain. The mountain can be so tall. But Jesus says, speak to it. Speak to the mountain. And it shall, it shall be that which you want. And then praise God because it is done. Praise God. Praise God because it is done. Praise the Lord. Lord, I thank you for my mountain which has removed. I thank you, Lord, that I'm healed in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that I have my breakthrough. I thank you, Lord, I'm going somewhere. It will happen in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. The spirit of faith. Faith is a spirit. I want you to know. Faith is a spirit. The spirit of, the, of faith. And not only that, you do your due diligence. The way faith acts. The way faith acts. Let's look at the book of 2 Peter 1 and 2. 2 Peter 1, 2 to 10. 2 Peter as we read 2 Peter 1, 2 to 10. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Second Peter. Just to check it right. Second Peter 1, 2 and 10. Look at this. It's a grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertains unto life and godliness. Look at that. Through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue. He has called us to glory and virtue. He called us to glory and virtue. That God has called you, Dick, to glory. So you give him glory and praise. As you wake up in the morning, Lord, I thank you for you've called me to glory. Your divine power has given me all things. Your divine power has given me all things that Pertains unto life and godliness. Through your knowledge that I know, through you that I know, 
through the knowledge that I know, I now have everything that governs my life. Oh, glory to God. Number four says, whereby are uh, given unto us according exceeding great and precious promises, that by this ye might be partakers of his of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in this world through it. To be a partaker of his divine nature. The nature of God. Wisdom. God is wisdom. So you are wisdom. You are, you are partaker of his nature. Glory to God. Beloved, it's, it's wisdom that we're dealing with. Number five said, and beside this, giving all diligence out to your faith. Listen to this. Faith is the bedrock. Faith is the bedrock. Faith is like a rock that stands and says, add to the faith. Add. Add. You can't add faith to something. No. Faith is a bedrock of your work with God. Faith is a bedrock. It doesn't move. It doesn't add anything. You need to add to the faith. You don't add faith to things. You add things to faith. Somebody hearing me right now. God says, faith is your bedrock. Faith is your bedrock. Faith is the rock on which you stand. Faith is Jesus himself. You're standing upon the rock. The rock which is higher. That's your faith. He says, add your faith. Look at this. Virtue. Virtue. Living right. And to virtue, knowledge. And to knowledge, temperance. And to temperance, patience. And to patience, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity. Look at this. And I'm going to close with this. He says, for if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Point close. Point close. He said, if these things be in you and abound, if these things be in you and abound, by faith, if these things be in you and abound, you shall never be barren nor fruitless in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things are blind and cannot see, afar off, and had forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Friends, faith is a force. There's a, there's a spirit of faith. We deal with the force of faith. There's a spirit of faith. And this afternoon, the word of God has come. And God wants you to respond to his word. God wants you to have faith. God wants you to walk in faith. God wants you to know that there is a spirit of faith that you need to embrace and carry on you. Wherever you are. Wherever you are and whoever is listening to me. When we speak about prosperity, we give people the chance to walk in it. When we speak about healing, we give people the chance to walk in it. This afternoon we're talking about the spirit of faith. You want God to envelop you by the spirit of faith. Faith cometh not but by what? Hearing the word of God. The word of God is being released by the Holy Spirit to you. Wherever you are, raise your hands and say this after me. Lord Jesus, I ask you, God, that you will cover me 
with the spirit of faith. Envelope me by the spirit of faith that I may walk in the spirit of faith and I may add to my faith that I will not be barren as I walk in faith. I will not be barren. I will not be fruitless. And I will lack nothing. In the name of Jesus, I thank you. And I bless you. And I adore you for covering me with a spirit of faith. For making me to walk in the spirit of faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Well, beloved, God's word has come, and we need to exercise faith and walk in the word of God. My favorite scripture is Psalm 1 that blesses the man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the, in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, meditating in it day and night. Shall be like a tree planted by the riverside, which fruit bears its fruit in the season. And whatever he does or she does will prosper. My prayer for you, is that you walk in the spirit of faith so that the blessings of God will come upon you. You will lack nothing. You will not be barren and you will not be fruitful, fruitless in the name of Jesus. But as you walk in it, you will be fruitful according to God's way in the name of Jesus. Now, friends, this is Dominion Miracle Center where we're taking territories for Christ, where we're changing lives and transforming lives, where the word of God is preached, honored, or traitor. Powerful. Powerful word of God is being released every Sunday morning, every Wednesday afternoon, and every Friday during our prayer time. We would like simply to invite you to come. Like Jesus said, to his disciple, tell them. And they went on and said, come and see. Just as now Philip told Nathaniel, come and see. Come and see what is being done. We encourage you to come and see what God is doing in Dominion Miracle Center. Dominion Miracle Center is situated in Ajax, Ontario, 415 Mackenzie Avenue. And uh, our telephone number is 905-427-8877 or 905-706-1360. If you want to call for any help, you can call these two numbers. And if not, and you want to connect with us by email, our email address is E S S E L D M C at gmail.com. That is to say, E S S E L D M C at gmail.com. Beloved, we wish you well in the Lord. Beloved, we bless you in the Lord. Beloved, we ask God's blessing to be upon you as you walk with God. And uh, we believe that next Wednesday, by the special grace of God, God will keep us alive and we shall be here bringing the word of life in its entirety. The wisdom word. Walk in wisdom and you shall not fulfill the last of the flesh. God bless you and I will see you next week. The same time, 7.15 p.m. Canadian time.